Welcome to Visual Civil. In this video, we will see top 10 important points that needs to be remembered before designing the eccentric isolated footing. So watch this video till the end to avoid the mistakes in eccentric footing design. Subscribe this channel and press the bell icon so that you can get all the notifications of the new video. Generally, for ordinary structures located on reasonably firm soil, it usually be sufficient to provide a separate footing for every column. Such a footing is called as an isolated footing. It is generally square or rectangular in plan. When the load is transferred by the footing to founding level, the soil bearing pressures from below tend to make the base slab of the footing bend upwards and hence it needs to be suitably reinforced by a mesh provided at the bottom side of the footing slab. The distribution of the soil pressure acting at the base of the footing is generally non-uniform and it depends on the rigidity of the footing as well as the properties of the soil. However, for convenience, a linear distribution of soil pressure is assumed in normal design practice. In addition to load transferred by column on footing, the weight of the backfill and self weight of the footing are also transferred on the founding soil. So for preliminary calculations, the weight of the footing plus backfill that is delta P may be assumed as 10 to 15 percent of P. Thus, in a symmetrical loaded footing, the gross soil pressure is equal to P plus delta P divided by area of a footing. And the minimum area required for the footing is equal to P plus delta P divided by allowable bearing capacity of soil. In eccentrically loaded footings, load transmitted from the column to footing act eccentrically with respect to the centroid of the footing base. This eccentricity E may result from one or more of the following effects. First, when the column transmitting a moment M in addition to the axial vertical load P. Here, eccentricity E is equal to moment M divided by axial load P. Second, when the column transmitting a vertical load P at offset E with respect to the centroid of the footing. And third, when the column transmitting a lateral force H located above the foundation level in addition to the vertical load P. Now, let us consider the column transmitting axial load P with uniaxial moment M. Here, addition of moment will result in additional loading eccentricity E. If this eccentricity lies within the middle third of the footing means value of eccentricity E is less than or equal to L by 6. Then the entire contact area of the footing will be subjected to a nearly varying non-uniform upward soil pressure. But if the eccentricity is outside the middle third of footing means eccentricity is more than L by 6. This results in negative value of minimum upward pressure. Therefore, area of footing from zero upward pressure to negative pressure will be in no contact with soil. Hence, to make the positive value of minimum upward pressure and to bring eccentricity within middle third of the footing, the area of the footing needs to be increased. It is desirable to proportion the footing base such as to make the upward pressure as uniform as possible to prevent the possible tilting of the footing under sustained eccentric loads. When the applied moment M is entirely due to dead loads, then its magnitude and direction are fixed. Hence, it is irreversible. Then we can laterally shift the footing base relative to the column 
to make the effective eccentricity in loading nearly equal to zero. Here the moment is clockwise. Hence the footing can be shifted with the distance equal to eccentricity E to the right side of the column axis. This will make the uniform upward pressure distribution. If the moment is anti-clockwise, then the footing can be shifted to the left side of the column axis as shown here. When the moment is due to wind load or seismic load, then its magnitude and direction are not fixed. That means the moment is reversible. Here, shifting of the footing base relative to the column to make eccentricity nearly to zero is not desirable. In such cases, the symmetric footing with respect to the column is preferable. At this time, the entire contact area of the footing will be subjected to a linearly varying upward soil pressure. Then it is better to proportion the footing dimension in such a way that the eccentricity will lie within the middle third of the footing. This way we can avoid the negative upward soil pressure. If the column is on the property line, then the position of the column is at the edge of the footing as shown here. In this case, it is preferred to combine that footing with adjacent closely spaced column footing. This type of footing is called as combined footing. Otherwise, we can also connect the eccentric footing with adjacent column footing by a beam called as strap beam. This arrangement helps in distributing the weight of eccentrically loaded column footing to adjacent footing. This type of footing is called as strap footing. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you did, please hit that like button, share this video with your friends and subscribe to this channel for visual and simplified e-learning. Thanks for watching and see you next time.